Hello guys, so welcome back to our engineering mechanics section. In this, we are going to talk about a new topic which is called as trusses. I hope you have understood about the previous topic which was coplanar forces. If you have any doubts regarding the previous videos or any other video, you can please mention it in the comment or you can also private message me on the email address given in the about page. Please like, share and subscribe to our page so that you can get regular update of our new videos, upcoming videos. Please go and watch the other videos also which are related to mathematics and electronics. <coughs> so let us start with today's topic that is trusses. So we, let us try to understand what are trusses. Now trusses are nothing but those structures which you are seeing it daily. They can be seen at the rooftops, they can be seen at the stadiums, they can be also seen at various bridges which are constructed. Strusses basically consist of a straight beams or straight members which are connected together at joints at their extremities. These members are basically my two force members that means that the forces which will be acting on this members will be passing through the member. The two types of forces which can be seen in these members are basically the compression and the tension forces. Now compression forces try to compress the member and tension forces try to rip apart the member. So basically my trusses will be made up of a two body members like these which will be pin jointed at their extremities. There will be forces like this force which is trying to compress the member. So this becomes a compression force. The other force which will be trying to rip apart this member is called as my tension force. <clears throat> so basically in trusses we are going to analyze these forces which will be applied on the members of the trusses. So we will be having combinations of these members together to form a truss. Now truss are basically those types of structures which are fixed in nature. They are suitable to carry loads on it like you can see in bridges which are made to carry the loads of the vehicles or the people. Basically my trusses are going to sustain the load which is being applied to it. Now whenever you are designing a truss you have to make sure that that the load does not fall at the center of this member. That means these members cannot sustain a very large amount of lateral stress. The members cannot sustain a large amount of force which will be applied at the point between the two joints of the members. Whenever the trusses has to withstand the load and the distributed loads which are going to be applied on the trusses, they are distributed at their joints. This is done with the help of something called as a floor system and this floor system is then connected with the floor beams and the stringers which are then transmitting the what, whatever load which is falling on the floor to the joints of the trusses. This is one type of a truss which is called as a prat. Now in this truss you can see that these individual members are all my two, uh, two force members which are connected at these joints, extreme joints. So each line is representing a member of that truss. So they are joined at their extremities to form this particular truss. So this is one example of a truss which is a type of a which, which has a name Pratt. This is one more type of a truss which is seen at the stadium. So basically this part is my rooftop and these are the pillars which are going to support that rooftop. So over here at the roof we will be up, uh, having those shades which are seen. So uh, they are placed such that they, the distribution of the load is always at the joints of this truss. We have shown over here two different types of trusses. In this particular truss we can see that there are four members which are included in it which are joined at their extreme points that is at point A, D, C, B. We have applied load at B and C 
A and D represents the reaction force because they are placed at ground level. Now we can see that because of the exceeding force which is present at B, it tries to deform this truss. Because of this deformity, this type of truss is called as unstable truss. In the second truss, we have three members. In this three members, there are forces which are applied at the joints. There is the, uh, it can be seen that because of the forces applied, there is no deformity which can be possible unless and until there is change in the length of the trusses which we assume that it is not possible to change the length of the trusses. So we can see that it is perfectly stable truss. So this type of a truss is called as a stable truss. In our study, we are going to study about the stable trusses and not the unstable ones. These stable trusses are also called as simple trusses because if I try to extend this using a two members, let us say I have added CD and BD to form this extra joint over here at D. Then this also forms a another stable truss. So that is why these type of trusses are also called as simple trusses. Because I can extend this, go on extending it using forming these triangles and so on. For the truss to be a stable truss, a simple truss to be a, a stable truss, this particular equation has to be satisfied, where M is number of members present in the truss, N is the number of joints present in the truss. So if this condition is satisfied, then this particular truss is called as a stable truss. So if, if there is an inequality present in this equation, like if m is going to be greater than 2n minus 3 then that is called as a over rigid truss that means there are extra members which are not required in that truss which are providing a extra rigidity in the truss next one is m less than 2n minus 3 is called as an unstable truss that means that the number of members which are required for the truss to be stable is less so that is why it forms a unstable truss which is this one. For analysis of the trusses we are going to see two, two different types of methods. The first method is going to be method of joints. So in this example I am considering a truss which is made up of five members and which has four joints to it. There are certain reaction forces which are present that is this RD, VA, HA are the reaction forces on this truss and this my P is represented as the load which is applied to this truss. Whenever I have to analyze the truss using my method of joint, I have to take uh, one thing into consideration that the truss is going to be in equilibrium. That means that the forces which will be acting, the net resultant force which will be on this truss is going to be equated to zero. So all my summation fx, my summation fy and the moment on this particular truss is going to have the value 0. After analyzing that, we have to go to the second step that is we have to analyze what is the forces, what are the forces which are present at each members. But without analyzing the member forces, we are going to analyze the joint forces which are going to be present. That is the forces which is present at the joint of the two members. So over here I have represented this A joint over here. So A joint has this reaction forces that is VA and HA and there is some force which is because of the member present. So I, since I have represented it in this way, I have to on the rod or on the member, I have to represent in, it in the opposite direction. The reason being because of the Newton's law that is all action has equal and opposite reaction. So that is why this particular force should be compensated by an equal and opposite force on the other member. So that is why you can see that since this particular force, this member is a two force member, it will be compensated by this particular force over here. So since you can see at this member, 
the two forces are going to compress this so this particular forces are represented as my compression so whenever you are analyzing at the joint if the force is coming towards the joint then it is considered as my compression if you see this particular member this particular member since this force is going away from that this force has to be represented in the equal and opposite direction on this particular member similarly i have to represent it in the other section also other side of the member also so since these forces are tending to break the member or expand it these forces are called as tension forces similarly you have to go on replicating at each and every joint what are the forces which are present so in joint for joints method what i have to do is i have to analyze the forces which are present at the joint and i will be calculating the summation fx summation fy at that joint in this you have to remember that we cannot use the moment formula for it and whenever you are applying the met by going by the method of joint you have to always see those particular joints wherein i will be having only maximum two unknowns in it because at a particular joint i will be only able to calculate the summation fx and summation fy of that so i have only two equations so i should have maximum of only two unknowns so let us take an example with some values so we are seeing our first example in which i have been given this particular truss with a hinge support at point a and a roller support at point d so while analyzing your first step is to analyze the entire truss to get the reaction forces at the supports you know that this is a hinge support so you have to replace that particular support with a system of two forces which is given by a horizontal force and a vertical force so you will be having a ha and a va at this particular point next this is my roller support so it should be represented by a single force so basically i have to now understand what will be the values of these particular reaction forces to get these unknowns we have to solve our equilibrium conditions that is summation fx summation fy and summation m should be equal to 0 so since you are having two unknowns over here i will be considering a summation m a at that point that means moment about a so moment about a will be written with the equation first of all i have to consider the force value that is 30 into what is the distance perpendicular distance from a and since it is moving it in the anti clockwise direction it should be a positive so that will have a positive 30 into a distance of 4 next we will come to this particular force that is rd so rd is trying to move this particular in the anti clockwise direction and its distance from a is 3 plus 4 plus 3 that means 10 so it will have a value of 10 rd this should be equal to 0 because there are no other forces which are acting on this so i will get as rd equals minus 12 kilo newton since i am getting a negative answer that means my assumed direction of rd is wrong and it should be corrected with 12 kilo newtons downwards next condition which i have to consider is summation fx summation fx means all the horizontal components so i have over your ha which is going in the positive direction and my 30 which is also going in the positive direction so that gives me this thing will be equal to 0 so that gets me ha as
माइनस थर्टी किलो न्यूटन सो अगेन आई एम गेटिंग अ नेगेटिव आंसर दैट मीन्स माय डायरेक्शन ओवर हियर इज चूज इन रॉन्ग सो इट शुड बी करेक्टेड एंड इट शुड बी इन दिस फैशन नेक्स्ट आई हैव टू कंसीडर समेशन एफ वाई टू गेट माय वी ए सो समेशन एफ वाई विल बी वी ए इन द पॉजिटिव डायरेक्शन एंड प्लस आर डी so va this should be equal to 0 so va is unknown and my rd i was getting for this particular figure i was getting it as minus 12 so i will get va as 12 kilo newtons so since i am getting a positive answer this the assumed direction is right after analyzing the whole truss i will be going for each and every joint so let me consider the first joint that is a so at joint a there is a force which is ha going in this way there is a force which is going upward which is va now there are unknown forces in my members so i can assume the direction of those forces so let me consider the force with for f the force in my member ab as fab let me consider the direction in this fashion the force in af should be considered in this fashion so it can be any way so if i am getting a negative value for that particular member then that should be corrected and the direction should be changed so in this i will be first of all calculating my summation f summation fx equals 0 so my summation fx 0 will give me a negative ha a positive fab a negative faf but with the component so let me consider this angle as theta if you check the figure if i want to find this theta then i have to consider my tan inverse of 4 by 3 so basically my theta has the value of tan inverse 4 by 3 so i am getting my theta as tan inverse 4 by 3 so that is why this faf will have its cos component in the x direction which is equal to 0 so in this the only known factor is my ha so let me write rewrite the equation will be equal to ha which is 30 kilo newton next equation i have to consider is summation fy now summation fy are all the y components of the forces so my y component forces are my va which is in the positive direction and only the other one is my positive faf sin theta so the unknown over here is my faf is equal to minus my va has a value 12 divided by sin theta so we are getting the value as minus 15 kilo newton now since this is a negative sign my direction of this particular force should be changed now it was going towards the joint so it should go away from the joint and since it is going away from the joint you should recollect that this particular force is my tension force in the member so basically then i have to write it as faf is equal to 15 kilo newton tension to calculate my fab i will be substituting the value of faf as minus 15 because this was considering the original case i have not changed the direction of faf in this equation so i'll be using the this particular value only while calculating this fab so i will get my fab as so i'm getting my fab as 21 kilo newtons so since there is no sign change this particular direction is right and it is going away from the joint so that is why it again is a tension in that member 
now we have considered this as my joint a this is my joint a which i have considered the next joint which you have to consider is that particular joint which has only two unknowns in it or only one unknown in it so in that particular case i know this particular members force i know this particular members force so the option for going to b is not possible because it has three unknowns the other option should be my f so let us try to analyze what will be the forces at this particular joint f after we have analyzed the joint f we will be getting these particular set of equations that is for summation fx equals zero i will be getting the component of f a f with cos theta if you observe over here i have <coughs> i will be getting a component of f a f as f a f cos theta plus 30 which was this particular force and minus FFE. So I have assumed this particular force going in this way. So it is compression. I am getting the FEF value as positive 21 kilonewtons. So that is why my assumption for this as compression was true. So this particular force has the compression force in the member. Now going for the summation FY. FY are all the Y coordinates. So I will be having FBF which is going in the negative direction and this particular component along y which is FAF sin theta. So I will be getting the value of FVF which is again a positive value and since I had assumed a compression because it was going towards the joint so it is a compression force. So that is why my FBF will have a 12 kN compression force. So you can just go on calculating the various forces. So as we know that we have now calculated this particular set of forces. We can go for now B because this has only two unknowns to it. After getting the values of B, I can then go for C because I will be getting this values. And after C, I will be going for the E value or the D value to get the remaining forces. So you for every joint you have to consider the forces in the member until and unless you get the forces of each and every member. So this method is called as method of joints. In the next video we will be discussing about the second type of method which is called as method of section. That method is much more better way of analyzing if my trusses have large number of members in it. Because as you can see, as the number of joint increases, this particular method gets tedious in nature because you have to analyze the method at each and every point. So see you till then for the next video. Please keep tuned and please subscribe to our channel and also please go and like our <coughs> videos, other videos and also go through our other videos. If you have any doubts regarding this video or any other video, please comment below. So see you till then and keep learning. Thank you.